Thank you, Steve and praise team. They encourage us all to sing. (laughs) I love that. And it's great to sing together the praise of God. Let us pray for just one moment. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The scripture reading is a short uh, passage from Luke 13, 31 to 35. If you're using the Pew Bibles like this one, it's 951, page 951 over the New Testament, Luke 13, 31 to 35. It says, at that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, that said to Jesus, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, Tomorrow and the next day, I must be on my way. Because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings And you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God grant us understanding and may the Holy Spirit guide us in interpreting these words for living the Christian life today. When God sets the course for us, God will see us through. So we start off in this passage with the Pharisees warning Jesus. Is that a little, might be a little surprising to you. Because we think of Jesus as always in conflict with the Pharisees. And we see this and we go, well, that, that's a little surprising. Why would people that we might think of as his enemies be warning him against danger. Well, of course, the scripture says some Pharisees, not all Pharisees, because there was a great great split in the understanding of who Jesus was in following him or not. People were trying to put the pieces together as to who they thought he was and what he was about and what he was doing. As you know, even his own disciples, half the time or maybe three quarters of the time, didn't really understand who he was or what he was planning to do. They got it wrong constantly. So when it says Pharisees were warning him, we we wonder about that. Some of the Pharisees, but I believe that there were some that were following him that felt he was called of God and they they may have been in conversation with Herod, we don't know, but they knew there was danger there and they were honestly warning him and saying, you know, you you just got to get out of here because Herod is on your back. He's going to end your life. And they were warning him of danger. Prophets receive death threats. Other other people do in certain situations, but prophets do receive death threats. Then and now, Jeremiah was in fear for his life and he was always pleading with God, complaining to God about this call to prophecy. He was in danger of his life as one of the Hebrew prophets. Mahatma Gandhi, a prophet in a more modern context, 
threats for his, against his life, finally his life being taken, as was Martin Luther King Jr., threats to his life, his life eventually taken. The prophets speak truth to power. They speak God's truth to powerful forces. And Jesus was in that line of prophets when he spoke truth to those that were in power and that were a danger to him. So yes, I believe certainly the Pharisees could, some Pharisees could have been warning him, and they were. But Jesus refused to be thrown off course, and that's the core of what I'm saying today in this message. Jesus refused to be thrown off course. I must be on my way. I must be on my way. That's a great assurance and comfort to us today because he was on his way for us. I must be on my way. Nothing was going to divert him from what he believed God was calling him to do. In Luke 9.51, a few chapters back from our text today, We have the verse that says, when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. There was a spot in the gospel story when Jesus set his face. He said, I'm on my way to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was was a dangerous place for him. I'm sure he knew that. His friends knew that. And they didn't want him to go. There are many passages that talk about that. They did not want him to go there But once his face was set, nothing was going to change that because it was God's call. He set his face to go to Jerusalem. Enemies and friends alike tried to disrupt his course. Some enemies didn't want to see his ministry fulfilled. And his friends didn't want to see him suffer danger and possibly even death. As you remember Peter, I mentioned this before, Peter confessed to be a Messiah and two minutes later, he got it so wrong about what this Messiahship was about. He got it so wrong that Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. They, it, but it was because they loved him and they didn't want to see him face danger. Friends and enemies alike tried to put him off course. The evil one, the tempting of the devil that we had a a couple of weeks ago, trying to steer him off the course of what this messiahship really meant to him. That was a messiahship of service, not of power. Messiahship of compassion, not of making the road easy through through misuse of, of power or not putting on a big show. But Jesus answered with scripture, and he answers here by simply saying, I must be on my way. When I looked at this passage in preparation and thinking about message over the last week or two, this, this phrase just keep, kept coming out at me, I must be on my way. I must be on my way. And we're thankful for that today. Jesus stayed on course toward Jerusalem and he said, he said of Jerusalem, how often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood. As a hen get, get, gathers her brood under her wings. You know how vulnerable that hen is as she is guarding her brood, they're under her wings, but she's vulnerable to attack. Jesus gave his life for the world as he gathers us under his wings. He was gathering his friends and his disciples under his wings. They didn't know it. They left him. They ran away for fear of what was going on, that what may happen to him could happen to them. They didn't realize what was going on at the time. Those that even took his life didn't realize, as as he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. But he had the whole world under his wings. And they didn't know it. We didn't know it 
in speaking of us as part of this whole human condition. He had gathered the whole world under his wings and he was vulnerable. For love of the world, he was giving his life. His disciples ran away, but later on, after the resurrection, as the understanding of what their place in the world was, as it deepened, many of them gave their own life as well. Literally gave their lives in following Jesus Christ. And so he calls us, usually not literally to give our lives, but he, he calls us to give our lives in service to him, in devotion to him. That's what worship is. That's what we come together Sunday morning. Worship is a word for worth, W-O-R-T-H, worthship. He's worth it. He's worth it to be at the center of our lives. And we give him the highest worth. We give him the highest value. And worship is about giving our life. It's not about getting. Oh, we, we get wonderful gifts from worship, but that's not essentially why we come. We come to give our lives to God in thanksgiving for what he has given us already. My friends, stay on course in following Jesus. Don't allow fear to take you off course. Jesus didn't allow fear to take him off course. In his humanness, humanness, I think at times there was fear there, in the Garden of Gethsemane in particular, but he knew where God was calling him, and courage is moving forward in the face of fear. Don't allow fear to take you off course don't allow doubt we all have doubts doubts uh, uh, sort of the other side of faith we all have doubts don't allow doubt to take you off course don't allow power Jesus faced those in great power he faced them down don't allow power to take you off course and don't allow friends or enemies to divert you from following Jesus Christ. Friends might say, oh, come, come on, come on this way. I don't know if this Christ that you follow and enemies as well would, would divert your course, our course, from following Jesus Christ. Say with Jesus, I must be on my way. I must follow this path. Stay following Jesus, his teachings, his compassion, his healing, his courage, and you will become, we will become more compassionate, more passionate for justice, more healing, more courageous. We, like Jesus, will say, we must be on our way. I remember an old, old gospel song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. We must be on our way. Let us pray. Lord God, now give us that courage, that compassion, that will deal with all the things that would divert us, would call us away from this path, away from you. May your words in in this passage, I must be on my way, be an encouragement and a strength and words of courage for us as we follow you particularly in this Lenten season, all the way to the cross and beyond. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let us stand and join hands, please. And now as we go from this place, we say with Jesus, we must be on our way. God go with us and God bless all of us. Amen.